Good morning. My name is Mark Tregonning. I'm the assistant pastor of Revival from Down Under, which is in the eastern suburbs of Melbourne, Australia. And last week I spoke on the topic Consider Not, taken from uh, Romans chapter 4, speaking about Abraham. And we looked at a lot of what Abraham did, and, and I think there's still more that we can... I think there's always more. You know, we... Uh, we hear, we're, we're called to be good hearers of the word and doers, but we have to hear first. And, uh, and it's by revelation from the Holy Spirit that we, he opens our eyes to things. You know, we can, you know, I've heard testimonies of people have heard something literally probably a thousand times, certainly a hundred, and then all of a sudden the penny drops and you go, yes, that's it. I see that now. And so... We, we, in being good hearers, we have to come as though we've not heard any of these verses before. And we, we come afresh because it's fresh manna that's falling from heaven. It's coming by the Spirit of God. And he wants to give us today fresh manna, fresh revelation. And something that we may have heard many times, he wants to just open our eyes of our heart so that we hear. Praise God. <clears throat> so let's turn to Romans chapter 4 again. And uh, I'll read the verse 19 first. Romans chapter 4 verse 19. And being not weak in faith, he, Abraham, considered not his own body now dead, when he was about a hundred years old, neither de yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. So we're looking at this, this word, he considered not. And we see that there are huge ramifications and implications and things that we need to consider and take into account. Be when we learn this was a key thing in who Abraham was and why he was blessed so much and favoured by God. He wasn't favoured for no reason. He was favoured by the Lord because he did certain things. And, and this is one of the very important things that he did. And it was part of what the expression of his faith. And we also saw last time that uh, considering not and staggering not, which... Uh, we see in James and, um, and not wavering and not being double-minded are all linked together. They come from the same Greek word. And we saw that double-minded, the uh, double is spelt D-O-U, B-L-E. And D-O-U comes from the same word of duo, means of two minds. And we're, so if we're considering one thing, we're not considering anything else we're being of one mind single-mindedness so let's go back to verse 17 and i'll read right through to verse 22 just to to give a an overview or a framework of uh, of the talk today in verse 17 of chapter 4 uh, as it is written i've made you a father of many nations before him who believed even god who quickens the dead and calls things that are, which be not as though they were who against hope, which is a certain expectation, believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken, so shall your seed be. And being not weak in faith, he considered not his own body now dead when he was about a hundred years old, neither yet the deadness of Sarah's womb. And he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God and being fully persuaded that what he, God, had promised, he was able to do and perform. And therefore it was imputed to him, or counted as, for him, righteousness. So his faith was counted as righteousness. His considering not was counted as righteousness. And the same applies for us now. Nothing has changed. If we consider the right things, and those things alone, if we're singleness of mind, that is faith and God counts it still as righteousness it's a right way of doing things it's pleasing to our God hallelujah 
So where to walk in faith, to walk the walk of faith is a walk of righteousness. Just as Jesus uh, was a teacher of righteousness and he walked in righteousness and that's what we're called to do as well. Hallelujah. There is a, a teaching going around. Some people say that we are already fully righteous and um, it's taken from the scripture in 2 Corinthians um, chapter 5, verse 21. If we can turn to 2 Corinthians. Five verse 21 for he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin speaking of Jesus that we might be made the righteousness of God in him so it's it's qualified with the w phrase might be and um, and we see that that uh, if we go to 2nd Timothy chapter 3 verse 16 We'll see again a qualification in this uh, in Second Corinthians, Second Timothy, chapter three, verse sixteen. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, correction, and for instruction or training in righteousness. Now, if we were fully righteous, we wouldn't need to be instructed or trained in righteousness. And so it is a learned thing. We're learning, we're being transformed by the renewal of our minds. We're storing up the righteous word of God within our hearts so that all of what we say, all of what we do comes out of and is based on the righteousness of God sown into us by his word. Hallelujah. So considering not is part of our training in righteousness. And it's a training of how to live by faith. And uh, so therefore, considering not is part of how we please God. If we turn to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6, in relation to pleasing God, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 6 says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, the Lord. So you could just as well say, without considering the right things it's impossible to please him the lord that means impossible so if we're considering wrong things that's very adversely affecting our ability well we, we we're just not pleasing god hallelujah in ephesians chapter 5 i'm going to read this one from the niv uh, bible ephesians chapter 5 verse 8 for you were once darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of the light. For the fruit of the light consists in all goodness, righteousness and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. So that's what we're doing today. We're studying God's word to find out what it is that pleases him. And, and that's love in action. We know that amongst just in the way we deal with people. You know, if we know someone likes something, then if we want to please them, we'll, we'll do what they like. We won't do the opposite. And we know that in the natural, and the same applies to our Heavenly Father. And um, so, so the fruit of the light consists of all goodness and righteousness and truth. So we're looking at the righteousness and truth of God's word to, to, so that we can please the Lord. Hallelujah. And when the Lord's happy, well, <laughs> everybody's happy. Hallelujah. And great blessings flow from that. The Lord never stops loving us, but we just still, we can't presume on his kindness of his love. We still have to do the things that, ple that are pleasing in his sight. Hallelujah. So considering is thinking about something, uh, speaking about it, uh, looking at it more closely, we, we do research and we find out how it affects us. And, and um, you know, when we're in the natural, when we're considering doing something in the natural, finding a job, finding a house, you know, these, these natural things that we come across, what church we should go to, 
uh, we, we consider, we take into account and think about and, and, and if it's a big decision, the bigger the decision, the more it'll probably take up our, our uh, considering processes and, um, and so we're weighing up and we're looking at the pluses and minuses and, um, and so there's investigation to be done. Well, we're investigating today. We're investigating into the Word of God. If we want to get a good answer, we have to go to a good source. And that, that applies in the natural. You know, if you, go, if you want advice in the natural, you don't go to a bad advisor. You do the research and go to a good advisor. Because um, bad advice leads to bad decisions. But the Word of God is the best advice we will ever have. Uh, it is the full truth and it's for our good and for our benefit and and that should be the source of all our decision making and so therefore it should be the source of all our what we consider hallelujah and so normally in the natural again once we've made a decision we then stick with it um there's you know we it's the the, the considering has ceased or it should have and so once we've found the truth of God's word, we then become singleness of mind in considering the truth and not looking at outside of that. And um, there shouldn't be any further discussion. And, um, and so we then are able to move on to the next step. So in, a matter, in effect, once the decision's made, once the considering's done, the, we, the, the matter is closed. And so when the Lord says, by his stripes we are healed, we've heard from him. There's no actually no other considering to do. There's nothing else to look at. The matter is closed. That's it. God has spoken. And if we've heard it, that's all we look at. Hallelujah. Praise God. And, uh, and the same goes when we seek the Lord on any other decision that we make. Once we've heard from the Lord, that's it. Hallelujah. So, in terms of hearing, I, I just mentioned at the start, hearing from the Lord, you know, we, we can, we, to be, again, to be good listeners, we can't say that we know something until we're actually until it's a part of our lifestyle because normally the process that we go through is we hear something in our head and then as it gets revealed to us by the the holy spirit we get received in our heart we we're still not there yet we still can't say that we know something i don't believe um because after we've actually heard something in our spirit we still have to be tested and proven on it. We have to be doing it. It has to become a part of our lifestyle. And so, and that's what we're doing today. You know, some things we can hear again and again, and we need to keep on hearing them because we need to ensure that we've really heard it in our spirit, but then we need to be reminded. So we're then putting it into practice because knowledge without being put into practice is actually useless to us. And, um, and so that's, uh, that's the process that we're going through. And praise God, he's there for us and he's quickening us. I mentioned last time that faith begins once the will of God is known. Until we've heard from God, we can't have faith. We can only presume or think or hope or, you know, but we have no basis for faith until we base it on something that is rock solid and firm and that we know that God's going to stand by his word. And so once he has spoken, we know that's it's a finished work because everything we're ever going to need is already provided at the cross. It's already provided. So, but we need to know that. We need to hear that from God. And, and then then... Faith is then the foundation and can be based on something rock solid. If we don't know the will of God, then there is no basis for faith. Um, if, uh, yeah. Our God is the God of I will, I am and I have. 
and he speaks of things that as though that are not as though they were and we saw that in the the passage and uh, so we everything in God is already complete it's a finished work and um, so when we're talking about the circumstances the way we see them we're talking about something as far as the Lord's concerned it that no longer exists because he's he's seen the finished work uh, he's spoken of the finished work and so if we're considering the natural the way it is now we're actually then speaking against God's will because he said by your stripes you are healed so then if we look at the symptoms and we're talking about the symptoms or if we're looking about looking at a, a relationship and how bad we think the relationship is um, where if we've asked for healing and wholeness uh, then then we're looking at the wrong thing and we're actually contravening God's word and uh, it talking about the, uh, the the negative aspects of things is muddying the water it's it's bringing a mixture in and god's not into mixtures and it also as well as being a sin it's it's actually poisoning our faith because it's causing us to go into double-mindedness and uh, it's it's nullifying our faith and um so it's it, we don't want to be nullifying our faith we want to be doing everything to keep it's like when we have to guard our heart we have to guard our because faith comes out of our heart and so we have to guard that faith we have to protect it and the way we protect it is by only considering the things that god is saying and uh, it's a precious thing you know to to have faith and it can so easily be encroached on things can come in on it and so that's part of how we guard our hearts um, is by keeping wrong thoughts out of the picture holy uh, faith is foundational when you look into the definition of faith faith is it it's a foundational and it's, it is the foundation of everything in the kingdom of god and and so it is the it's the the building stone i mean jesus is the rock but our connection to the rock the way that we keep our feet on the rock is by faith that's the the glue that keeps our feet on the rock <laughs> so we don't slip off and um so it is foundational and uh, it says in psalm 103 to i'll just read this one forget not all his benefits he's forgiven all our sins and healed all our, healed all our disease in psalm 107 verse 20 it says he sent his forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions praise god and all these people moved in faith so God's word stands the Lord has not changed let's turn to Psalm 33 verse 11 Psalm 33 verse 11 there are many many verses that talk about the fact that that the Lord never changes he's the same yesterday today and forever and and so this is another um, another one of those verses that everyone just comes in a slightly different angle on it a slightly different uh, perspective so we read that the counsel of the lord stands forever the plans of his heart from generation to generation so the counsel that the lord gave all of the word of god all his plans for our life stand forever they are unchangeable and unchanging and um and so what jesus did when he was on planet earth as a man uh, what happened through the book of acts 
what happened, what the Lord did with the mighty miraculous signs and wonders through bringing natural Israel out of Egypt and his provision during the 40 years in the wilderness. Nothing has changed. Nothing has changed at all. And this is the, the foundation for our faith. God, the Lord has a track record. He's proven himself again and again, countless times. Hallelujah. In 1 John 5, verse 14. And it's because of the Lord's track record that we can have confidence in him. That's why we have faith in him. Because he is perfect. He has a track record. And, um, you know, we look at our adversary's track record and it speaks for itself. The devil, he has a track record. And, um, but praise God, the Lord is, is, is Lord and he is unchanging and he is perfect. First John 5 verse 14, And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he hears us. And if we know that he hears us, Whatsoever we ask, we know that we have the petitions that we have desired of him. And faith is confidence. Faith, faith has heard from God, knows the will of God, and is confident. And uh, stands, stands tall, shoulders back. <laughs> oh, yeah, I better do that. <laughs> Praise God. He, you know, people can have confidence and it's just a facade. And then when they go home and they're, uh, they're in their office or they're in their bedroom, their feathers droop and uh, they know in their hearts that their confidence is based on, on is ill-founded. It's just a, a wishful thinking. But there is no wishful thinking in God. It's a confidence based on rock-solid um, God himself he's created all the things all the things that we can see in the whole universe were created by him and so this is the confidence that we have in him and he said if we ask according to his will so again it comes back to discerning the God's, God's will in the area of healing it's really straightforward uh, from cover to cover in the word of God the, the Lord wants healing. In other matters, we have to seek him and find out, you know. Um, but once we hear, and he wants us to hear, um, and he will lead and guide us so that we can hear him and discern his will. Praise God. So, and that's why we can say, because the provision is made, I'll come back to that verse again. By his stripes I was healed, therefore by his stripes I am healed. And, uh, you know, we can say that and we can say that. And I have no idea how many times I've heard that verse over the years. But, you know, I still think that the we, we just get further and further revelation on things as we hear them. It goes deeper and deeper and it and affects you know, sometimes we can hear something and affects one part of our life. It's kind of like when we, will, when we walk into a house, you know, we'll get the, uh, you know, we'll get enough to see um, what's happening in one room. But, you know, there are various parts of our life. You know, we may be really rock solid on the, solid on the healing thing, but in terms of believing God for finance, well, you know, the Lord will take care of that. Well, no, he, he wants us to be sure about that and to be confident. Uh, or in his ability to restore relationships. Oh, well, I'm, I'm really strong on healing, but I'm not so sure about whether he can work on another, the area of relationships. Uh, so the Lord's wanting us to be really strong in him on understanding his word in every part of our lives. And... Um, and that's what he's doing. That's what he's doing even right now, today. Hallelujah. So, um, the centurion, when he sent people to, to Jesus to ask Jesus to heal his servant, he worded them up beforehand. He'd actually spoken the word. He'd already determined uh, 
Um, he knew enough about Jesus to know that Jesus was able to heal. He clearly had faith in that. So he worded them up and he, what he said to, the, to his servants as he sent them to Jesus was, uh, actually it wasn't his servants, it was uh, people from the synagogue. Um, he explained what he understood by faith. He said, if I tell my servant to go and do this, he does it. Uh, his centurion is in charge of a hundred men. And if I say to this man, go do this, he does it. If I say to that man, go do something else, he does it. He understood authority and he recognized it in Jesus. And the question is, are we recognizing the authority and the power of the word of God in Jesus? He is present in his word here today and we need to be recognizing that authority and we need to know that in our life that when we recognize authority there's no ifs or buts that's what we do you know if i if i'm driving my car and i see a red light i stop because that red light is a in place by the authorities so that i don't go through the intersection and if I go through the intersection through a red light, I know that I'm putting my life and probably someone else's at great risk. And so do we see that in Jesus? Do we see that in the word of God? How there's huge authority. And when we know the authority of someone that we're hearing a word from, we recognize it. We, we understand it. And, if they, and we're listening because we know that whatever they say uh, is going to take effect. It's very significant. And so, you know, we need to be listening to the Lord in the same way and recognizing and understanding his authority. And we need to be people that are true to our words so that, you know, when we do this, it's done. You know, if I'm, you know, we, we, uh, we respond to authority and because um, we are servants of the Lord and uh, he is, whether we like it or not, our master. And so when he says something, we say, yes, sir. Yes, Lord. Yes. And um, he's a loving master and um, but nevertheless, when he says something, we need to be doing it. Praise God. And so that's all we consider. In, those, in that context, that's all we're considering is what he said. Once he said it, that's what I'm doing. That's it. The matter is closed. Praise God. Um, the woman with the issue of blood, when she came to Jesus, she said, if I just touch the hem of his garment and... Um, it's interesting that the hem of the garment of the high priest had uh, bells and pomegranates on it. And the bells uh, can be likened to speaking in tongues. Um, they can be likened to spirit-directed prayer. And, and I was just having the thought that it could be likened also to declaration and confession. And um, what we're saying, hallelujah. And the pomegranates speak of fruitfulness. So... She decided in her heart to touch uh, by faith and it was, a, it was a prayer, it was a declaration, it was coming into agreement with the, the completed work of, of, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. When we look at the... We um, we'll just touch on again the activity of the the role of our adversary, the devil. Um, because this is where a lot of things can come from to that we can start considering. Uh, he wants to be whispering in our ear all sorts of things. And um, we know that from the tempting of Jesus in the wilderness, how the devil's main weapon was to speak part of the word of God and to twist its meaning or try, attempt to. And so, or use it out of context. 
So that's uh, another good reason why we need to know the Word of God. And the more we know the Word of God, the less likely we are to to be fooled by the or um, by the devil, and uh, we can recognize it for what it is, because we we take anything that we hear and we put it into the context of the whole Word of God, and so, and again in the Garden of Eden. The devil, the serpent, he said, he questioned the word of God. He said, did God really say? Did he really say? He was trying to sow, the whole time he's trying to sow doubt by bringing confusing things to, to tempt us to consider or think about something else or a wrong understanding on the word of God. And so the clear message there is the more we know of the word, the more we get into the word of God, the less likely or the more equipped we are to recognize when we're being lied to. Hallelujah. In 1 John verse five, uh, chapter 5, verse 17, another excess that the devil has is if we are in sin. And... Uh, We've been talking about faith being righteousness. In 1 John 5 verse 17 it says, All unrighteousness is sin. So if we're considering anything outside of God's word, we have moved into considering the wrong things and we've moved into unrighteousness and we see then clearly that it is sin. And... So the Lord's just encouraging us, just directing us, keeping us focused on what is his truth. And in that is safety, in that is blessing, and um, in that is victory and the ability to overcome. Because when we're considering the wrong things, uh, it leads us to doing the wrong things, coming to wrong assumptions, wrong conclusions, making wrong decisions. Um, in James chapter 1, verse 14, I'm going to read this one from the Berean Bible. I just, the way it brought out a couple of things I found was uh, quite good. James chapter 1, verse 14. But each one is tempted when by his own evil desires he is lured away and enticed. Then after desire was, has conceived, it gives birth to sin and sin, when it is fully grown, gives birth to death. So we see this process here of once we start considering just a little thing and it probably is, it might be striking a little bit of a note with our flesh rather than our spirit and then um, the, after the desire conceives, it gets more thinking about it, more considering. Uh, it starts to give birth to sin, start acting on that wrong thing that we've been considering. We start putting our hands to it. We start speaking about it. And then it grows and grows. And all of a sudden, it, it, uh, it's fully grown and it gives birth to death. And that's the process. So we need to nip things in the bud by knowing what we should be considering and uh, anything outside of that is just no way. Hallelujah. So God is good in just making it clear to us how to live our lives. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 4 verse 7, still looking at what to consider, what is right. Genesis chapter 4, verse 7. If you do what is right, you will not... Sorry. If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But if you refuse to do what is right, sin is crouching at your door and you are the object, its object of desire and you must master it. Praise God. So... We're not to be walking around fearful, you know, we're not to see sin crouching behind every door and in every shadow. This is just a call 
for us to know what's going on and so that we can walk wisely and in the light of God's word and so that we know the consequences if we step out of that light and and violate the truths that we know so it's uh yes it's a sobering thought it's a um but god's good that he he just shows us he 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 tells us everything he he confides with us as friends he said i've hidden nothing from you so he just wants us to be informed so that we can walk and in, in righteousness and do what is right praise god so he wants us to have mastery over sin and um and uh you know we're the object of desire of sin but we say no it's easy to say no praise god it may be crouching at our door but the only way that sin can come in is if we entertain it or consider it um and uh and unless we allow it by doing wrong so uh let's just look at the power well we have been already but the power of wrong considering um in the aspect of speaking uh, negative words over ourself or over others and i'll just give an example i heard uh, a uh, a story given or an example of um of a father who was speaking uh, negative words over his son who when he became adult became seriously depressed and it seemed like even though the father who had a ministry uh, of, of, and, and saw a lot of prayers answered, um, very successful, yet all he prayed for his son and, and nothing happened. He saw no change. And, um, and then many years later, the, fa the, the father had had a history of speaking negative things over his son. And so many years later, the father uh, recognized this. The Lord brought it to his attention and he asked the Lord to forgive and cancel all of what he'd said. And uh, some weeks later, he, uh, after that moment in time where he asked for, to, for that cancellation, he, um, he ended up speaking with his son and they tracked it back to that very day. The son had a total breakthrough in 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 just coming out of all the depression and was healed and so <clears throat> and i mean there are many 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 stories of you know similar to this that i have heard and um it just shows the power of wrong considering if we're saying negative things we're considering wrong things and it's actually then coming out and the power of that is we're actually speaking into being the negative things that we're saying there is power in our negative words just as there's power in our positive words and um and so that's why the lord's warning us because he knows the power of words uh he's wanting us to know the power of words praise god and so once there is forgiveness and it just shows the 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 power of forgiveness recognizing doing things wrong and then recognizing the power of forgiveness while there's anything held against anyone in any way shape or form you know that is an absolute blockage to god being able to move in our lives and uh, that's probably a whole topic in itself but it's something we must be ever vigilant about and you know we can be doing everything else right but if there's unforgiveness, it will just be a blockage and, and we'll just go round and round and round and round the mountain until it's dealt with. And um, because we, the Lord forgave us. He went to the cross and, you know, while we were yet sinners, he forgave us. We were still sinners. We were still going about doing our evil works and, and he was on the cross forgiving us. And so even though people continue to do the wrong thing by us and to us, uh, if we don't forgive them, then the, the word of God is very clear. The Lord cannot uh, and actually will not forgive us until we ask for forgiveness. So there's great power in that. 
And it just again shows the power of, of negative words, but the power of that we have to cancel those words and to ask the Lord to, for forgiveness. Praise God. So, and we, we can cancel things that have been said over us too. And um, if anything comes to mind that we've been aware of, we can, we can for forgive those people and, and, and cancel those words and move on. Praise God. How good it is to move on, released and set free from the baggage of the past. Psalm 103 verse 12. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. I'll read that again. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. And that's, that's the nature of the God we serve. He, he, has, he went to the cross so that he can totally deal with, separate and take away all of our transgressions. Every negative word, every wrong considering and remove it from our lives. Praise God. And in Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12, <clears throat> Hebrews chapter 8 verse 12 still talking about forgiveness for I will be merciful to and I've put in brackets forgive where there's mercy there's forgiveness um, where there's no forgiveness there's no mercy the, uh, the, the two are really linked for I will be merciful to their unrighteousness and their sins and iniquities I will remember no more. Hallelujah. And, um, you know, with forgiveness, it can take, in the natural, it can take time to forget in the natural, but we choose not to entertain those thoughts anymore. And where there's true forgiveness, the power of those thoughts is broken. They might still be there, but the power is broken. <clears throat> but we still have to choose not to consider them, not to go back and dwell on them because and, and not not revisit them. You know, and that, that takes that takes discipline. That takes the Lord's help and He's there to help us to do that. Praise God. Hallelujah. Another example of the power of words, um, Wrong considering. I heard the story of a man uh, and his wife, I think, and family. They're in a car accident. And uh, this man had all his life said that he won't live past 40. Why he said it, who knows? But um, he's a Christian man, Christian wife. And, uh, but he said that. And he happened to be 40 years old at the time of this accident. And his wife was very seriously injured. Um, she could well not have, in fact, if it wasn't for a miracle, she probably wouldn't have made it. She would not have survived. She was that seriously injured. But all she remembered on that particular day was um, his, uh, uh, she was on the ground and her husband came up to her and said, said something again to the effect that, well, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm not going to make it. I'm not going to make it. And here he is walking around, you know, fine. I mean, might have a few cuts and bruises. But again, it was just coming out of his heart. I'm not going to make it. And he, you know, probably barely even had a thought for his wife who was seriously possibly not going to make it because of the extent of her injury. And she lived, got miraculously healed, and he died that day for no known reason he died that day and that's a true story and it shows <coughs> the awesome awesome power of words hallelujah hallelujah negative words are actually a curse you know negative words considering wrong things is really right on the borderline if not into witchcraft because that's what witches do. They speak negative things over people. And that's how serious it is. That's how serious this topic is. 
Hallelujah. And, um, you know, we, it can come out very, you know, some people, you know, the, particularly there's a temptation when people are going through serious illnesses to want to go home and be with the Lord. Well, that's a death wish, you know, and, and that's not okay. You know, God, and until we're, we're called to live until, you know, he's given us, uh, he's given us life and the, we're to protect life. Hallelujah. And uh, there are all sorts of ways that things can come out that uh, uh, seem quite natural, but are absolutely not okay with the Lord. And... Um, so, praise God. So we just need, yeah, it's just really in all of that, what we are considering is, is very important before the Lord. And it either frees up or blocks what God can do for us. That's the key thing. Um, so um, we'll move on to the next bit. In Philippians chapter 3, verse 7. What are we considering valuable? Philippians chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. But what things were gain or valuable to me, those I counted loss, but I now consider them worthless for Christ. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, Jesus my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. So, God's word is valuable to us, and we can never value it highly enough. And so what he's saying today and any other day from his word is very valuable to us. And if we value something, we are talked about protecting our heart, guarding our heart, we will guard these words and we will be vigilant. And anything that comes in and tries to, to take us outside of what God has said, we're onto it. We're onto it. No, no way. I'm not considering that. Praise God. And so Paul knew what he'd found <coughs> to be valuable. And that was knowing Christ. And to know the Lord is to know his word. He is the word of God. Hallelujah. So our Christian walk is all about discerning what is valuable and helpful and what is not. And uh, if we consider God's word, we will gain. Uh, but if we consider our fleshy, natural selves, the worldly things, we will lose. And uh, we see that with the house built on the sand compared with the house built on the rock. The, uh, if we're built on the rock, on the surety of God's word, we will stand and we will have the benefits that when storms come, we're still standing. Whereas the house built on the sand was washed away. And in the case of sickness, if we consider the symptoms of sickness, we will lose the battle. And... That's a hard word and it's the truth also um, because we are in violation of God's law. We cannot be violating God's law and uh, you know we're called to be in the light. We're called to, to know what he's saying, what his will is and to be doing it. And um, brothers and sisters, that's just the way it is. That is the word of God and it's awesome when we, when we live in that way. Praise God. And we, we frame our world by the way we speak, by the words we speak. And if we speak the symptoms, then that's what we get. That's really, that's the way it is. And just to do with that, framing our worlds, the power of words in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 3. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. I'll say that again. The worlds were framed. The worlds means we have, I understand, extremely powerful telescopes or radio, whatever they are, that can look millions and billions, if not billions of, of uh, kilometers into the, the universe. 
and the ho that is the world. That's, as, that's everything. All of this was framed by the word of God. And uh, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. And that's the power of God's word. And in the same way, we are framing our world in the same way. We're created in God's likeness and he's given us that ability and that is the power of our words. <coughs> and um, it's, it's the more we see it, the, the, the more we realise just how important and powerful it is. We're framing the health of our bodies. We're framing everything that we do um, by just speaking it into being. Of course, with faith. There must be faith. It must be coming out of the heart of faith. So God, the Lord didn't uh, speak the worlds into existence and, um, or say, let there be light, and then, and then suddenly realise, Phew, I wonder if I've, you know, there was no doubt, you know, I wonder if the darkness is going to go away. You know, there was no double-mindedness on his part. And he didn't look at the darkness and think, well, have I got enough light to really fill this huge void of darkness, you know? Um, you know, and, and we can do that. We can think, well, have I got enough faith, you know, <laughs> to, uh, you know, to fill this void of darkness, what this mountain, this mountain that's in front of me. Um, but no, we step into our rightful position of being seated with the Lord in heavenly places and that mountain suddenly becomes this tiny little thing sitting on planet Earth and we're seated in heavenly places and we get the right perspective. And so, and it's a perspective that God wants us to have. And so we then see things in their rightful, rightful perspective and uh, that is part of the, the power of the word because in in the natural a natural person can only ever speak from their natural abilities and their natural resources but we're not speaking from the natural we're not speaking from our natural abilities resources you know most of us uh, may not have the ability to be able to pick up a phone and ring a, a couple of millionaires to uh, back us up with uh, a, a lazy hundred thousand dollars or whatever <laughs> but I mean, you know, but we just don't have the resources. And even if you could contact every billionaire on the planet Earth, that's not going to do it to move the mountains that we need to be moving because man just cannot do the things that God can do. And, uh, you know, with all the best medicines, man does his best, but he's still, there are still people not making it through hospitals. And uh, this is the power of God's word. Hallelujah. Nothing is impossible with him. Hallelujah. So we're not to be perishing through lack of knowledge. We see this in Hosea chapter 4 verse 6. Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, my people are destroyed for a lack of knowledge. And you know that, um, we're not to be daunted by that, you know, because particularly, you know, for a new Christian, we might think, my goodness, I read through the Bible and there's just so much stuff I don't know. Um, the Lord is gracious and merciful and he, he, he covers the things that we have that we don't know of in ignorance. You know, if we, if we don't know certain things, um, he, he's, he is very gracious and uh, he always takes us where we're at and he calls us for an account to the things we know, not the things we don't know. Yes, there are things, if, if we're resisting some knowledge, uh, then that's a different matter. But if, you, if we're truly open and saying to the Lord, look, whatever I need to know, show me. And so I think the Lord is gracious in this. So don't take this as a, as a, as a hard word. I mean, it's, it's a strong word, but God is, is merciful. 
but we certainly can never presume on his mercy. So we are to be a people that are constantly seeking him and desiring more of him so that our eyes are opened and we're letting more light in, into our lives. And, uh, you know, speaking, speaking, considering the negative things can be like the fly in the ointment. The ointment is our, is our good faith, the faith that we have, and we can be doing things right, but if, we, we, if we're considering something that's not of God, it can, it can be the fly in the ointment. And we know the, the story with the fly in the ointment, that the, the fly, we're not inclined to use the ointment anymore once there's a fly in it. And uh, so I mentioned earlier about, well, anyway, it, 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 the fly in the ointment can nullify uh, the faith that we have. And so, again, just, uh, you know, we, it's okay to listen. If we go to a doctor, it's okay to listen what he has to say and what he has to think. But we must not continue to consider it or definitely not be passing it on to others. Uh, I had a friend of mine uh, in, an, in another city uh, who is no longer with us. She had cancer and she was constantly updating all the friends on the doctor's reports. <coughs> I'm thinking, no way, you should not be doing this. But she just didn't, you know, have a, a, a revelation of, um, you know, we, we, we just got to be considering. And she, I don't know that she ever fully got a hold of, of just focusing in on what God said and his truth. And um, it's okay in terms, again, with sicknesses, it's okay to, to take medication. It's always according to our faith. It's always according to our faith. And, and also just doing natural things um, that help our, you know, help our bodies naturally you know, doing the right thing by what we're eating, etc. The key thing always is where we're putting our trust. And it, it can easily move. You know, we can get tied up with doing natural things. Our focus of, of trust has to be in the Lord. Okay, we do these other things that might be helpful. I'm doing them because they may be helpful. But it must be my trust we, we serve a jealous God and he wants all of our trust. He, want, he doesn't want part of our trust. He doesn't want part of my trust in him and part of my trust in the doctor and part of my trust in something else or part of my trust in my financial advisor or part of my trust in a, a psycholo psychologist. He wants all of our trust and, um, and, and, and all of our focus. You know, we, we do these other things, but they're very much peripheral. They're on the outside. They're not the focal point of where we're coming from. And, and we just have to be vigilant on that, um, constantly watching that we're not moving because it can be so subtle. It can be so subtle. Uh, you know, you can subtly move your focus and all of a sudden you realise, oh, I'm here trusting this and I should be really trusting the Lord. So it's, and that's the subtlety of the devil sometimes. It's just the subtlety of, of human, our human weakness. You know, we... We can get preoccupied with things and we can forget and we're called not to forget. And um, so we're to keep the things that are important in our focus. You know, in Proverbs chapter four, it says that keep the word <coughs> in the midst of your heart and before your eyes and uh, you will have success. Praise God. Is it no, uh, just enough to believe? Um, we read in the word of God that the, even the demons believe, but they don't do. And the key part of our doing is what we speak. We need to believe and act. And part of our acting, there are times when there's nothing we can do physically. Uh, there's nothing we can put our hand to. There's nothing else that we can do physically to express our faith in action, but we can always speak. We can always speak the truth. And that often, uh, and, and that should be accompanied with actions, but the speaking, speaking out, and um, is, is a key part of our acting out our faith. In Matthew 11 verse 12, 
It says the kingdom of God is forcefully or violently advancing and the forceful lay hold of it. Praise God. So faith is not passive, it's active. And uh, it doesn't, and you know, sometimes it's, 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 it's forcefully, it's, 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 it's aggressive in a godly manner. Um, and, and it's violently taking things. We're violently taking back what the devil has stolen. And, um, and you know, we know that Jesus was the lion and the lamb. There are times when we have to be the lamb the Lamb of God, like the Lamb of God. And there are times when we need to show our teeth and be the lion. <laughs> but, but it's true. And um, we also see the fourfold uh, aspects of, of the Lord's character when we see he's also the eagle and the ox. And uh, so it likens us to the fourfold aspects of, of who we are. And... And so when it, Paul says, I, I'm, I'm all things to all people. So in a, what he's saying is when it's appropriate to be the lion, he's the lion. When it's appropriate to be the lamb, he's the lamb. When it's appropriate to be the eagle, he's the eagle. And so, you know, this is part of, of, of who we are. And we're just being as Jesus was. That's who he is. And um, praise God. So... In terms of, uh, let's just look at, for a minute at reports. Um, excuse me. What we consider determines what we speak. And so what we speak is actually a report. Uh, we know that the spies in the wilderness were, came back with a, an evil report. Well, 10 of them did and uh, Caleb and Joshua didn't. And so... You know, man can say that there's nothing further. You, you, we, we, sh we should know that uh, if we go to a doctor, he, we could get a report that, well, there's nothing further that, that medical science can do for you. Well, that's a report. That's, that's what they're saying. Um, they, what they should be saying, actually, a godly doctor uh, would be saying to you, I don't know of anything else that can be done in the natural that would be a that would be a a correct way of t of terminology for them to use but we can go and we take our report from the word of god so that it's a perfect report it has a positive outcome and uh we're we're called to do exploits and we have from our master physician a extremely good report a healthy and glowing report by his stripes I was healed. Hallelujah. My God meets all my needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. So uh, in Philippians 4 verse 9, Philippians 4 verse 9, those things which you have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do, and the God of peace shall be with you. There's always peace when we, have, we, when we know of an excellent outcome. And so we're looking at what we're, we're learning and receiving and hearing and seeing in the word of God the things that we need to be doing. And so we then need to be doing them. Hallelujah. And so our outcome is assured. And so when we're looking in at our promised land, we're not to be looking at the giants. And, um, and so the giants are the things like the symptoms, the obstacles, the hindrances, the lack, the debt, um, the the debt collector knocking at the door, um, a marriage that seems just way beyond any sort of reconciliation. Uh, we don't look at the natural. 
hallelujah. We see what God has said. And some people might say, well, when I'm speaking about what I'm seeing in the natural, I'm just being real. I mean, because yes, it's real. It is real. Uh, but we know the truth of the situation. And the thing is about being real, uh, it's actually being real carnal. And, and uh, you know, because it's saying something that's opposing the truth of the word of God. And um, so considering and speaking wrong things is carnality full blown. And it, 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 it grieves me in my, the more I come to see it, and I even, I mean, I, I still hear things coming out of my mouth and I'm thinking, whoa, I should not be saying that, you know. And so we still can be catching ourselves in, we're, we're being in a process of being transformed by the renewal of our mind. And so it's, it certainly grieves me when I hear a negative report and uh, things being said negatively. Um, and, and yet on the other hand, it's so buoying up to hear people speaking of the positive about what God's doing and uh, the truths of what God's done and accomplished and the fact that we have the victory. And you come away from a conversation like that thinking, whoa, yeah, that's, that's the truth. That's, that's the reality. Uh, you know, tell me again how healed I am. Tell me again the truth of the word of God. You know, um, by his stripes I'm healed. And so we can buoy each other up by speaking the truth, not preaching. You know, it, it must never move into preaching, but just sharing in a positive manner the truths of God and speaking the truths of God over people and how blessed we are and how the favour of God's on my life and, and, um, and that's speaking things into being. Hallelujah. I'm just going to finish with what I finished with last time but which is Philippians chapter 4 verse 8. But again, as I mentioned at the start, there are many layers upon layers and different ways we can look at any one particular verse and different things that can be brought out. So it says in Philippians 4, 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are, are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue... If there be any praise, think, and I've put and speak of these things. Hallelujah. The kingdom of God, when we go to another country, uh, a non-English speaking country, they speak another language. We know that in the natural. Well, the kingdom of God, we're learning a new language. It's called the word of God. And... Um, that's, that's what we speak. That is our new language. And yeah, it, it takes a while to learn it. It takes a while to be putting into practice, to become fluent in it. But it's what we're learning. And uh, so if we, you know, we want to get to the stage where, you know, I, I had a friend who was learning French. Uh, well, she's actually a relative. And um, she... Um, loved going to France and just mixing in with the French and speaking French so fluently that they thought she was born and bred in France. And that was, to her, that was a, a big deal. And I'm thinking, well, <laughs> you know, that's, that's for us. How good is that if we can be speaking fluently the word of God to the degree that the Lord thinks, well, he's just, he's just one of us. She's just one of us. <laughs> We're speaking the language of God. And uh, it becomes then, you know, we, we, English is, we, we're not speaking it as a second language. We're speaking it as our first language. It becomes better than our English. Hallelujah. Or whatever our native, la la native language is. So, um, are the symptoms of every, any situation worthy of praise? Are they symptoms pure and lovely? Is there any virtue in the symptoms of a situation? 
is it a good report to say that the situation is critical and getting worse? Or the doctors and the psychologists say it's gone too far, there is nothing more that can be done. No, absolutely not. These are not virtuous things. God is our life. And so we speak his words and his words return to him full and accomplishing and fulfilling all that he has planned when he spoke them. Amen.